It's Friday, you guys, which means it's time for some dessert and booze. Oh. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, tips for all shades of mom life, and it is Friday, which means it's time for some food hacks. And this time, we're hacking dessert and booze. Summer's almost over, you guys, so I might be able to squeeze in one more summer-themed kind of dessert and booze hacks, but this might be the very last one. And if it is, we're going out with a bang. So I have not one, not two, not three, not four, but five recipes out of the dessert section of this book to share with you and then two hacks or booze hacks two drink recipes out of this book to share with you guys and they're all summer themed so if you're looking to end your summer with a bang I got you covered. If I can squeeze in one more, like I said, I will. Otherwise, there's so many fall related desserts and booze hacks in this book that I'm anxious to get back into sharing those with you guys. But for now, I'm gonna bring you down to my kitchen counter and we're gonna talk dessert and booze. Okay, you guys, so we're gonna start off with two dessert hacks and these are simple but delicious and it is all about fruit. So the first one says, the secret to sweeter watermelon. This summer, when you're serving watermelon, sprinkle on a little sea salt. The watermelon will taste sweeter because the salt actually fires up its inherent flavor by sapping the water content and concentrating the juices. But be careful not to overdo it, just a very light smattering of salt spread evenly over a slice is sufficient. I don't know what smattering is, but technically they're just asking you to put a little bit of salt onto your watermelon to make it sweeter so we're gonna try that because I had always heard that hack but I had never done it before and then the second one sounds super interesting and I was really excited to try it so this says how to get the sweetest pineapple ever your life is now divided into two halves the part that was totally okay with eating sad mediocre fruit and that part that discovered this trick that will change how you eat fresh pineapple forever and we're gonna go over how they want us to set this pineapple up but like i said this was really interesting and i was super excited to see how well it was going to turn out so basically their theory is when these fruits get shipped from the store especially a pineapple it stands straight up in the box so they want you to cut the top of the pineapple off and then flip it upside down onto a cutting board and leave it for 24 to 48 hours and let all the juice from the bottom drip down to the top. They're saying by it staying upright in a box from shipping all the way down to being sold, the juices settle at the bottom. So if you flip it over, all the juices are just going to disperse between the rest of the pineapple. So we did that one first. I cut it, I left it, and we'll address that in just a couple of days. So now here we are with our bowl of sliced up watermelon. I did not show you guys how to slice the watermelon. I've done that in meal prep, so I'll just link it up above, but we're just gonna put a couple of these pieces of watermelon on a plate and then just sprinkle with a little bit of sea salt. Now, I really like the chili lime salt that Trader Joe's has. I've put that on a watermelon before, but I just did a really thin sprinkle and put it on the watermelon. I don't really know if it changed the flavor that much. I don't know if it made it that much sweeter. This just happens to be the season for a watermelon and I feel like every watermelon we've gotten has been super sweet anyways. So I didn't really see too much of a difference with the sea salt, but I really do love, like I said, a little bit of that chili lime salt on my watermelon, the one that I get from Trader Joe's. All right, you guys. I'm about to blow your mind right now, okay? This no-bake ice cream sandwich cake, I had to cut it in half because I would have been tremendous, but this is off the chain. So this says, this is one of those intense recipes that is usually enjoyed only by children and or drunk people. Don't bring it to your Marshall Prouse book club meeting or to a quilting bee. This cake is kind of crazy and should be reserved for those who are ready to rage. 
no joke for real because this is so decadent but so amazing and super simple it's four ingredients you guys four now this called for 24 ice cream sandwiches i'm only using 12 it called for an eight ounce container of cool whip some caramel sauce and then some reese's peanut butter cups and they want you to use a big 9 by 13 but i'm only using a 9 by 9 just because like i said i cut the recipe in half and we're going to line it with foil because it makes it easier for you to lift the cake out if you didn't want to serve it right from this container so you're going to unwrap your ice cream sandwiches and both the 9 by 9 and the 9 by 13 fit four ice cream sandwiches perfectly that way so had you had had that extra length you probably wouldn't have needed to cut any but i had to go ahead and snip some just to kind of fit it exactly in the pieces so it made a good bottom foundation and you'll see when I got to the top that I was actually short a little bit by the way that I had to do this but that's because I changed the recipe but you can see the concept you're just going to line the bottom of the pan with ice cream sandwiches and now you're going to top it with a layer of Cool Whip just going to spread half of that so four ounces on top of that pile of ice cream sandwiches you can lick the spoon if you'd like I'm sure I did a couple of times because it's Cool Whip and it's delicious now I'm using the caramel sauce from Trader Joe's. This is my favorite caramel sauce of all time. But again, I changed it up halfway through for the top layer because this is super thick. So it pretty much just mixed with the Cool Whip and made a caramel Cool Whip layer, which is not really supposed to be the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a whole separate layer. So you'll see what I did in the next portion, but then you're gonna layer your Reese's peanut butter cups. I bought the minis and I just chop them up hand chopped them and then you're going to go ahead and repeat the same process so we're going to go and put the ice cream sandwiches on top now you'll see that i ran out like that little tiny little piece towards the end i did not have anything to fill that in with so i just tried to fill it in with extra cool whip and whoever got that spot was kind of gypped a little bit sorry not sorry but there was nothing i can do about it but now you're going to go ahead and layer the rest of the cool whip on top and again i filled that little spot in with the cool whip. This will probably be something great if you're throwing like a summer party, a pool party or something like that and you need a big dessert, this would work out perfect. So now I heated the caramel sauce, which just made it so much smarter because I was able to spread it and create more of a layer than that caramel sauce was before because it was just too thick. So now we'll add our Reese's peanut butter cups. And then once it's all done, I actually chose to put a couple of chocolate chips on top. I thought that would be really good. We had an abundance of chocolate chips. If you guys saw a grocery haul, we had chocolate chips like crazy. So I just threw a couple of extra on there, not as if this thing needed it, but holy cow, it just, it looked so good. And now you're gonna throw it back into the freezer. So I threw it back into the freezer overnight and got everything refrozen. And then this was it. Like, and it's probably not too much of a difference between before and after the freezer, but holy cow, this, it was just amazing. Like every single one of us were drooling. Paul's already said, when are you gonna make this thing again? And it's obviously super, super easy, but very decadent. Not something you're gonna make all of the time because it's pretty much just taking an ice cream sandwich and covering it in caramel and Reese's peanut butter cups and chocolate chips and Cool Whip, which is, you know, a whole lot of sweet and sugar, but if you don't mind and you want to treat yourself this summer treat is absolutely delicious so highly recommended this is probably up there with one of my favorite of the dessert hacks thus far all right now it's two days and here is our pineapple so i noticed it started to get a little bit brown when i first cut it it was already starting to be overripe so when i flipped it over this time i was kind of disappointed that some of the edges started to really get brown but it wasn't like that deep down i think that was just the part that was exposed more to the air but i used my pineapple slicer i love this thing it's linked down below in my amazon store super inexpensive like under ten dollars and it makes slicing a pineapple super easy some of them have a little piece up top that you can slide down and make it into chunks but i had that one last time and it was plastic and it didn't do so good so i just got the metal one this time and it doesn't have that little twisty thing up top to make it into chunks but i just like the little slices and i also like to stick a straw in and drink the fresh pineapple juice that's down below you can be fancy and use it as a cup when you're done 
All right, now I'm about to get my kids involved because they really love cooking in the kitchen with me. And I ordered this little six pack of popsicle holders off of Amazon. So that'll be linked in my store down below. But that was solely because they had a popsicle recipe in here, one for adults and one for kids. So we're gonna start off with the kids one. And this one says gummy bear popsicles. This colorful summer treat is awesomely clever and cute. And you'll be surprised by how good frozen gummy bears are. They're satisfyingly chewy on the outside and hard on the inside which I kind of thought it would have been the other way around and then it says and you'll have fun taking little breaks from a popsicle licking to chomp on them so I have two cans of soda here a lemon lime like a spray and then a lemonade ginger ale I was gonna let the kids choose and some gummy bears and we're gonna make four of those the recipe says you can make four of those and then we're gonna make two of these which are blue moonsicles and I swear this just screamed Vanessa I wish I would have had these made when she came here so I could give these to her but this says blue moon has always been my favorite beer but I could never tell if maybe I was just biased by the slice of orange it always came with while these popsicles might not get you totally wasted they are such a fun way to throw back beers on a hot summer's day and dare I say an even better way to enjoy blue moon so it's essentially a little bit of orange juice and blue moon inside of a little popsicle holder and it says you can substitute corona for blue moon and add lime juice instead so i have my blue moon belgium white and a little bit of orange juice and we're going to make two of those and like I said, this is a great way to get the kids involved because I poured the soda and then Maya and Mason color coded and counted out our gummy bears and they are the ones that drop them in. Yep, mommy red, yellow, green. He's on his head. Yep, plain. And two orange. And the green. Nope, we have six there. And then here, we can do red and green. A plain, a plain, yeah. we need a plain. A white one? Can I eat some of them? They were so good. And then here. Hey, um, gummy, gummy. <laughs> there you go, gummy. She said, the plain, the plain. That definitely gave me a good chuckle. So now we're gonna drop six of the gummy bears in each one. We tried to separate the colors so that it was perfectly even between the four, but then Mason came and he got involved. So the kids were taking turns counting and color coding and dropping them in the popsicles. So definitely a learning experience and a fun little learning tool at the same time as making a sweet treat. High five, awesome. Mason, high five. High five, dude. Where are you going? Ow. All right, I guess I'll take it. So one thing I will say is that these lids played games with me and they super frustrated me. I think it was just my mindset. I expected them to snap on more than they did. So I did not include the voice of me speaking and saying the things I was saying while I was trying to put the caps on. We'll just go there. Uh, but now it's time to make the adult ones. So we put a third of each popsicle with the orange juice and then the rest of the way we just fill with the blue moon. You're gonna go ahead and put those obnoxious tops on and then we're gonna stick this whole six pack into the freezer. Now I set a timer for one hour because we need to address these in one hour's time. Not the blue moon popsicles those are for three hours increments but the gummy bear ones we have to come back at an hour because we need to disperse those gummy bears so it's partially frozen but not completely frozen so I tried to shake them which is what they recommended but some of the soda started to come out but I just used a barbecue skewer and I moved all the popsicles around in the container so that they were dispersed through the whole thing and then just put the lid back on and stuck them back into the freezer for another two hours. Like I said, both popsicles needed to be in for three full hours time. Once they were all done, it was perfect timing because it is literally over 100 degrees here in Texas. So I let my kids go outside and have a little bit of sprinkler fun and then I called them in for the popsicles and they absolutely love them. I mean, what kid isn't gonna love a little bit of a frozen soda and some gummy bear? So they 
they were completely over the moon about them. Mason was like, and make sure you tell them. I give them all these thumbs up. He was really, really impressed. And again, the kids had a lot of fun making them. It was educational and delicious. But now it's time for Hobbs and I to try the blue moon ones. Please ignore the crumbs in my sink. This one was a little harder to come out. We had to run it under the hot water, but he didn't think it was so bad, but he was just being kind. He is not a blue moon fan. I, on the other hand, love me some blue moon. So I thought they were absolutely delicious and I cannot wait to share them with Vanessa. Last dessert on our agenda, and this one, you guys, is holy sweet. So this says insanely easy summertime pie. This recipe is so damn easy, it doesn't even qualify as cooking. The effort involved is possibly one notch beyond scooping some ice cream into a bowl. No one will have any idea it took only three minutes. And it's literally four ingredients, you guys. So we need one can of sweetened condensed milk. You need one container of a frozen drink concentrate. They they recommend limeade. You only need eight ounces of whipped topping, but I have a 16 ounce container. That's what Walmart subbed me for. And then one graham cracker pie crust. So you're going to mix all these ingredients together, the sweetened condensed milk, and then the limeade. I think this probably would have been better with a little bit of pink lemonade. That's just my thing. I like lime, but I prefer lemon better. If I had to choose, I would choose lemonade over limeade and I would choose pink lemonade over anything. But this, you guys, was hella sweet. It is literally sweetened condensed milk and then concentrated limeade and then Cool Whip. Like it's that simple, that easy, but that is super, super sweet to me. And then you just go ahead and pour that in a graham cracker crust and then you stick the lid on it and stick it in the freezer for four hours or overnight. Whenever somebody says the option of doing it overnight, I always do it overnight just so that you make sure you get that pure effect of that actual fruit frozen texture maybe that they want you to have but I don't know you guys Paul really liked this Daryl was like eh over it but I don't know this definitely isn't my favorite usually she doesn't disappoint me I just put a little bit of lime zest on top just to give it that pretty effect and a little bit of extra lime flavor and I put a little wedge on the side it is definitely creamy and I liked the crust but super sweet and like I said I probably would have liked it if we did it better with some pink lemonade and now last but not least we're on to our very last booze hack we did some blue moonsicles and now we're on to something called a summer cocktail. So I told you guys we were sticking with the ultimate summer theme. So this says this is one of those impress your friends cocktails when you want to be fancy but don't want to put in the effort. Even the most refined palate can still appreciate the three ingredient cocktail when it looks and tastes this good. And honestly I was really excited about trying this because it spoke to something I've never tried before. So you need a cup of ice, you need a small little thing of orange juice to top it off with, they recommend using an IPA, which is a Irish pale ale. And then they talked about Campari. Now I had to look up Campari. It says it's an Italian liqueur. It says right there, it's a product of Italy and it says bitter. I actually play a game called Bingo Blitz and there's like an ingredient game inside of the bingo where you collect ingredients and make recipes. And I've had to get Campari as a recipe to make on my bingo game. But that's the only time I've ever heard of it or seen it, so I had to look it up. It took a crazy crazy amount of liquor stores to find it, but it's essentially bitters, which for me, I don't really like because I'm not much of a martini girl, but I wanted to give it a try because she doesn't normally steer me wrong. So over ice, you're supposed to pour half of this IPA. Look how dark that IPA is. Like I like dark beer, but I'm not really fond of the pale ale. And then you're gonna put in one shot of the Campari and then you're gonna top it with the orange juice. Now I used a spoon to mix it, but if I was actually mixing a drink behind the bar, you're supposed to put it in a shaker or, you know, back and forth from glass to glass, whatever. We're just gonna use a spoon, but I was so anxious to try it. So I was like, okay, here we go. We're gonna give it a shot. And you guys, this is the first time she truly disappointed me. She said when it looks and tastes this good, it does not taste good. Now again, I don't like pale ale, so 
I'm not really sure if it's the beer. I took a sip of just the beer by itself and it was absolutely horrendous, but this is bitters. And when you look on the back of the bottle, it gives you an a recipe for making a martini because that's what you use bitters in. So it talks about gin and vermouth and that is not my thing. My girlfriend Bonnie would probably be all about this. For me, not so much. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of this bottle of Campari because I'm certainly not using it in anything, but this is the first time that I was truly unimpressed okay you guys so that's it for this time's dessert and booze hacks i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up it certainly lets me know that you guys are enjoying watching them and if you want to get caught up on all of our past food hacks any kind of dessert and booze hacks i have a whole playlist that i'll link for you guys down below so you can get caught up to right where we are i love you guys all so much and we'll see you guys in the next one bye guys